Hey everybody, happy 2022. This is Gay and Bruno, the host and I was going to say host and producer, whatever I am, of Between the Sheets podcast. We're on the first and third Friday of every month, except this month. Um, we were doing back-to-back. We'll do today, and then we'll do next Friday. You can call us at 323-524-2599. It's, um, I don't know, we've got a very interesting selection of women today. Um, and, uh, oh, QTE Brat and Between the Sheets uh, podcast on YouTube as well as on Facebook. And Tony is working the boards today. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Um, uh, <laughs> joining us tonight, she just came back from um, a very far, far place, uh, Nice, France, and it's Cara Noble. Nice, France. Nice, France. Yes, nice, I'm France. Just back. I am literally just back from Nice, France. Long flight home. I told you. I knew it was. I can make it up. Um, I have Cheryl Murphy. Guys, lovely to be back. Lovely to see everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> and then back again, uh, Sheena, Sheena Metal. And uh, she has a Hi. new, you have a new show. I mean, you can I talk do. about that if you want right mm-hmm. now while we've got the forum. Oh, sure. Yeah, I um, have converted my daily radio show, The Sheena Metal Experience, into a web TV talk show. It's going to be where my entertainment life and my spiritual life kind of come together. So I just uh, taped my second one live uh, today. So it's every Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. And if you want to know more, you can go to my website, sheenametalspiritual.com. And I'm very happy to be there. And uh, it's nice to be doing that kind of thing again. Yeah, but you had, you well, well weren't you doing, I mean, you had a show, right? I mean, you've had many shows in your career. Sure, I have, uh, yeah, well, at my old affiliate, I had four. And then during COVID, I moved two of those over to a radio network that's syndicated to iHeartRadio and Google Podcasts and a bunch of other places. So I do my Raising the Vibration show there and my Haunted Playground there on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, respectively, at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Now I've taken my daily show and turned it into a video format, which is what I kind of always wanted to do. So it feels good to be doing um, a television interview show. It's been a really long time for me since I've done that. Very good. And Cheryl, what have you been up to? Um, like, what's how? What's the new year started for you? You know, the new year started off right away with me doing a beautiful group of readings for families, uh, for people online. So I love doing that. Uh, and I'm also going to be with Thomas John later this month, and he'll be on the show next Friday. Woo-hoo! So we're doing there. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Medium Thomas John. Yeah, excited to have him. Well, Cara, we started out um, when Cara walked in, and Cheryl made a comment of saying how beautiful Cara's hair is. And we started talking about it, and she goes, no, she'll save it for air. So tell us about, tell us the story about your hair, Cara. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been going to France, and uh, you may have noticed if you've listened to the show often, that I've been to France actually three times in the last six months. And each time I go, I go to the hairdresser that's downstairs <laughs> um, from my apartment, which I've just sold, which is why I keep going back and forth. Um, it's done, signed, sealed, delivered, money's in the bank, etc. So that's all good. Um, sad and moving. But all I was going to say was I now have my hairdresser is in the south of France, my dear. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do come Fre- February or March because <laughs> I, I, I'm going to need him. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't we love to all just say, you know, I'm going to France to get my hair cut. <laughs> I have to get my hair done. Um, get the private jet. We'll be going shortly. So, um, you know, it's so funny because, you know, Sheena is always, you know, I, I just shoot from the hip and Sheena's always very prepared. She's like, so what's the topic? I'm like, I have no clue. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to feel like talking about today. Um, but, but I know that you actually brought something up, so I will let you start the convo and we can all just chime in and people don't forget. We want to include you and join the table of 323-524-2599. Please call in. Well, I was saying that because it was the new year, I thought that um, it'd be a good idea to talk about releasing and letting go because the new year is a fantastic time to let go of what you don't need and to embrace what you do. And um, I know a lot of people talk about releasing and letting go, and I'm all about that, surrendering, releasing. As we move into 2022, because there is so much of everybody talking on social media about what they don't like and how horrible things have been since COVID and yada, yada, yada. Um, I think it's a better idea to talk about um, embracing what serves you. 
and then letting go of what you don't need. Because I think we spend so much time thinking and worrying about letting go, let it go, let it go, which is wonderful. I teach a workshop called Please Release It, Let It Go. I, I get it. But I also think it's so important that we really, really put the emphasis on what does serve us. What are we keeping and why? And what are the things in our life that, that make us really want to continue with those things or people or behaviors? And then we can also talk about, you know, what, what's got to go? Because always a lot of things have to go. And I think the new year gets us really geared up for that next 12 months of ascension and involvement in our lives. All right. Well, I will punt it to Cheryl. Yeah, I really think uh, Sheena's on to something because there's so much uh, negative chatter, so to speak, negative conversation. We kind of need to go back to our roots. We need to kind of tap into that nature TLC. We need to start giving back to Mother Earth. And as Sheena mentioned to ourselves, we need to really add some more high vibration back to this planet because it's it, that's what's going to help us balance again or start that new 2020, uh, 2022 off quickly. And it's going to have a rapid incline is what I keep feeling is, look, we're manifesting right now. Right now we're manifesting. We're co-creators. So wouldn't it be great, as Sheena mentioned, we release, we let go of what we don't need. Let's make some room for all well, the beautiful things that we want in our life. Well, but how do you figure out, like, what do you dump? What do you keep? How do you change? How do you shift? I mean, you know, you know, some people, you know, it's pretty evident. They know. And what about the people that are, like, struggling? I mean, how, like, how do, like, how, I, I mean, look, I know I have some patterns of behavior and stuff like that that I need to improve. Um, yeah, that's the third time you've put that hand sanitizer I know, on right I, there. I am so, I, I, <laughs> really, third I, time. I just, I, 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 I don't, I, you know what, I kind of like the way this one smells, actually, to be honest. Actually, it does smell it nice. It does smell nice, so it's like, mm -hmm. um, So, it's like, you know, there were things, you know, like, there were friends of mine, oh, you know, and, and this year and what every other year, you know, the, the New Year's resolution. This is what I'm going to do, you know, and then it's the, you know, I'll stop smoking, I'll stop drinking, I'll stop that stuff. But it's about the spiritual, the intuitiveness within ourselves. So, like, you know, if someone says something to me, like, oh, Gan, you know, you're just too clingy, too needy, whatever. I don't particularly see that as a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if someone points it out to me, I don't necessarily see that as a problem or I don't see what they see of me, which then I get totally like, well, that's the only person that pointed it out. I mean, really? That's who I am. Accept me as me. So how does the person, the individual, not what th the people are saying to them, how do they really tap into to find out what really needs to be altered, fine-tuned? What stays? What do we build on? What goes? What new thing is coming in? What new thing should I work on? But I don't even know how to tap into that. So how do we find that baggage of stuff, that mixed Pandora's box? I love that uh, eBay practice. I'm sure that Cheryl's familiar with it where you you're supposed to take everything in your life and with them it's how you go through your stuff right how you clear your stuff but it works for emotional stuff for relationships you hold everything in your hand and you meditate on it and you say is this something i want to keep is this something i want to donate is it something i want to sell is it something i want to throw out and i think it's the same thing with emotional attachments is this someone i want to keep in my life is this someone I want to the donate, which to me means, <laughs> do I want to give them back their emotional <laughs> stuff that they've put on me? Do I want to give them back their emotional stuff? Um, make a profit, though. You've got to make a profit. <laughs> exactly. Are they someone I can live without, or are they someone I need to literally change my phone number and, and run to the hills? <laughs> and I think it's the same thing. It's with stuff, with jobs, with relationships, with your habits. You take each thing one at a time and you say, is this something that brings me joy? Is this something that makes me feel warm in my belly? Or is this something that makes me feel stressed out? 
And things that make you feel stressed out are things that got to go. And even though you have an attachment to them, spiritually or emotionally, if something is a consistent source of your pain, it needs to be let go, even if that means that you let it go with love, hoping that person will grow and come back to you. But to stay in that same toxic relationship, whether it's with a person, you know, with a habit, with, you know, a st bunch of stuff piling up in your house you, you don't need. It's, it's all about releasing and letting go and keeping the things that are wonderful in your life. And I think we spend so much time, like, you know, we call everybody a hoarder. If you have five things in your house, now you're a hoarder, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And we're always telling people, like, get rid of stuff. Get rid of stuff. Let things go. Get rid of stuff. Go through your house and get rid of stuff. You know, weird people, like, their job is to go through your house and get rid of stuff. But nobody ever talks about getting rid of the emotional patterns that don't serve you, getting rid of the people in your life that don't serve you. I mean, there was a time in my life where I wish some lady had come and cleaned out the clutter of people in my life that weren't serving me. We need to think about that. What What is really the best things in our life? And give them our attention because what happens is we spend so much time worrying about this a-hole or that a-hole that is treating us terribly and chasing after them and trying to change them and trying to make a decent relationship out of our association with them that we are not fostering the people in our lives that are like, hey, remember me? I'm being great because we're so busy worrying about the negative ones. And I think it's the same thing with a lot of things in our life. We were so um, almost obsessed with struggle that we forget to foster the things that are easy and wonderful. But it does, does take sense? work. Absolutely. But it does sure. take work. And, you know, a lot of it is like, you know, I mean, I sit there and I go, oh, I have to, you know, I have to clean my mother's room. I have to put the, I mean, it's like, it's like just to think about doing it is exhausting because I hate, I would hate to do it for anything. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, so even when reevaluating situations, job, uh, friendships, relationships, you know, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's daunting. The process is daunting and it's exhausting as yeah. just, you know, and it's like, you know, you know, and it's, and, and you know, you know, you people know me. I mean, I give it 110% and I keep giving it and keep giving it. And there are some times, you know, when I have actually been in those situations and in time, some of the people, it has worked out fine. Um, the majority, no. But I have a really hard time doing the cutting. Um, I, I'm usually the one that's cut, which is okay because I, it, to me, it's not like, I, it's not about ego. It's like at least they had the balls I in a way to say, you know, they, to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. But, you know, have you had toxic relationships and friendships and stuff in your life, Cara? <laughs> 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 As I say it tongue in cheek. <laughs> Hello, oh my God. <laughs> Well, when I was on the radio, and looking back now, I can see it very differently. In, in the UK, I was on the radio with a, a very funny and very well-known, but completely narcissistic, very mean man. And I was around him for eight years. I was on the show with him. And I'm sure, looking back, that did me an awful lot of damage. Um, he was just very selfish and not very... He didn't share. He didn't share. So, yes, I've been around... We all have, right? But yes, being aware have. and actually making that choice of what Sheena's saying, where you get to the point where you actually make the choice, this has got to stop. You know, I'm this is I'm ruminating too much about this situation, this person, and 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 really it's it's over. You know, that I don't need to be in a relationship with this person anymore. I can wish them well, and that's always a nice way of ending it, rather than in a mm -hmm. negative way. But wish them well and just say, mm, okay, I'm going to take this path, and it's time for this particular dynamic to to leave my life yeah yeah namaste away yeah i was just thinking <laughs> that namaste i was going to say that because i thought about it but like it's it's sheena's line she's got to use that she's got to say <laughs> that so tony how about you let's Whoa. get you ah let's get tony on the line about this <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to know? Ah, <laughs> you, you should be paying attention. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I mean, but I don't you think as you get older, you start 
the reality of life kicks in and you you see the the faults of people that you can forgive and then faults that just are too much right. to handle. Good point, because we've all got yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where I am. I yeah. mean, there are people that I care about, like, like deeply in my life, and, and I'll overlook some of that because they do give – we obviously are still friendly, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, and we're making a conscious effort to work on things. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, one, abuse, 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 and doormat, doormat, doormat. It's like a little bit abuse, a little bit abuse. And, and, and But, you know, the thing is, as long as I, it's like, as long as I feel that it's moving in a positive direction, it doesn't go backwards, it's not stagnant, then I am open to continue the dialogue. Mm. But it's the people that are just such, like, just so crazy that, that, that you're right as we get older i don't even engage i like give yeah. them a little bit to engage and then i'm done i barely give them a little bit you anymore. barely <laughs> give them a little bit okay <laughs> well it's the awareness as well of any of any situation but once you're aware that this is maybe not is this good for me am i reacting badly to this right. once you're in that place of awareness then you can you can work work on the muscle because it's not easy it isn't easy to 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 say goodbye to some people who were in your life for and were very important to you my goodness, I mean, I honestly, I've had to do that in the last couple of years, and there it is. It just has to be done. It's hard work, but it's very freeing because, you, you know, open one door, close one door, et cetera, et cetera. It's a good thing. And yes. I, have to, I have to say, exactly. though, I feel, I feel even the same when other people may not see me as good for their lives. I'm okay with that. If I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not what they need in their life, and they say I need to go, I'm okay with it. Right. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, that's, that's very takes work. That's very mature of you. Why, thank very you. Very spiritually sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also, I mean, I've just been in the south of France, as you know, I just said, and I sold a place. She's bragging now. This is about the <laughs> seventh time she yeah. said south of France and her hairdresser. <laughs> um, and my great friend there is Pam. She's uh, and She and I got this p- apartment together. It's mine, but we did it, everything together, and she managed it and looked after it. And I've known her since I was 22, and... You know, she's like a sister, but we and it was an emotional time because we had to give up something that really was a big part of our both of our lives. But she said we we were hugging and crying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And she said, you know, we've never really had a crossword in all those years. And I, I really thought about that a lot, and I realized that's absolutely true. In other words, there's some people that you just are meant to meld, and it works. And there's some people it's not meant to work. Some people are just there to get you to wake up, mm-hmm. right? But isn't that what we were talking about the last show? Like, like you know, twin flames and, and soulmates and karmic. And yeah, so that was fascinating, So, actually. I mean, you know, so it's all just sort of like, you know, do I say goodbye to this person? Do I? Maybe I'm supposed to, maybe we're karmic and I'm supposed to work this out in this lifetime because God knows I kind of need to be done with this shit. So <laughs> I think... You know, I think intuitively, and this is how I deal with the people that come into my life. Some are a little difficult, some are not. It's I just don't. If it gets too hot in the kitchen, I just don't throw it away. I work on it because I think maybe there's that underlying thing of what we talked about. You know, a karmic soulmate, a twin flame. So I, I stay up with it as long as, and I don't mind the sparring and stuff. I'm actually, you know, I. I'm pretty good at it if I have to. It's just where it crosses the line of where you disrespect each other, whether it's verbally, physically. I've never done that. But, I mean, if you're sitting here and you're just toxic, 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 but within that every once in a while about of toxic, you have wonderful, fun times, you know, then I don't really throw people away. I mean, it has to be somebody really just completely abusive and toxic to me. So we have a caller. Okay. Hello, caller. Uh, this is Gayan and uh, and Sheena and Cheryl and Kara and Tony. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Do you have a question for our panelists this evening? Yes, I have a question. For Who is this? Sorry, sorry. What's your name? I'm sorry. Barbara. Hello, Barbara. Okay, what's your question, love? Hello? <clears throat> hello? Yeah, you can talk yes, now. Hello? Yep, what's your question? Hey, I have a question for for Sheena. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, when you're in a relationship with someone, 
for like 15 years and you know you have to walk away. But at the same time, it's like when you walk away, you're like losing your best friend, but you know that you've been basically, you know, they're welcome at for a long time. Like, how do you get away from that when that other person still wants to be in your life? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, right? Because um, somebody who's treating you like a doormat, they like having their doormat. Nobody wants to wake up one day and find out someone stole their doormat. But you have to choose you, sweetie. You have to choose you first, which means you have to I say, did. I did that. I'm, I'm first, and you I, have to just, you, you got to go, honey. Sometimes you have to walk away while they're kicking and screaming, right? Some people, honey, are almost like parasites. They need another person to survive. For whatever reason, they didn't become adults, and they need someone who's a parental figure to take care of them. And they often pick their primary partner to do that. But that's that's not okay. And you didn't sign up for that. Thank you. Because I, you know, told the person, I said, listen, I said, I'm not your mother. I'm not your bank. <laughs> yeah. I am supposed to be your partner. Right. And when I left, they were, like, emotionally crying and sure. didn't want me to leave. And, like, two hours later, I had to go back. And they were still emotional. And I said, well, this is just the best for the both of us. And you know, I didn't cause this, this is on you, and, you know, they try to turn it around on me when I was just, you know, the innocent, you know, person in the situation. Isn't that a narcissist? You know, so I was like a, yeah, it's a yeah, well, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I was with someone for 15 years, and in the beginning, we both said, made a promise, we never would cheat on each other. In April, she cheated and was cheating, and she doesn't, I mean, you have to be stupid to cheat, because... I'm a retired private, private investigator. So I already knew everything she was doing. Hey, what's your number? <laughs> um, I already knew what she was doing, and I set her up for a lot of stuff, and she didn't realize it. You know, I was, like, tracking the stuff on the phone. Um, I had the house rigged up. I mean, I had everything rigged up. Um, you know, she was going away on a weekend with a friend uh, with her kids uh, that were 14 to 15. I'm like, that girl's friends are not 14 and 15 um like so like here's my credit card and i tracked the card and i knew where <laughs> she was the whole weekend and she had lied and then finally i can finally i confronted her because if i'm going to ask you a question on something like this i already know the answer i just want to have see how you respond so every time i would ask her a question she would just respond normally like it was in the 15 years so maybe step back and say wait a minute for 15 years have you been bsing me I'm like, you're so good and so smooth at it. And after a while, I called her out on a bunch of stuff. And she just looked at me and was like, no, no, I, you know, I did that. You know, and I was like, I know you did it because I, that's why I asked you. I wanted to see what your answer was. So, Barb, I have so a question. I made the choice to leave. Barb, how long were you with her before you started realizing she was cheating? 15 years. Uh, on our 15th anniversary um, in April. She got our anniversary. So you and were I was saying like, this is really weird. So Barb, you're saying she did not cheat prior to then? No, not that I know of. Okay. She probably did. Not I, that I know of. I think she probably did. No, no, because she she would always like we'd always be together, we'd always do everything together, and then uh, I went to go use her phone, and I, I I admit I'm like if I touch like someone else's device, I will screw it up. I just have that electronic, you know, bad juju about me. <laughs> but I went to go use her phone, and she was like hovering over me. I'm like I'm getting the same phone. I just want to know how to do something. And then I realized uh. later that she was afraid that the girlfriend would call and her photo would pop up on the thing. And oh. then after that day, she started hugging her phone. I'm like, something's up. And that's when, like, I went into investigative mode and I was, like, all over it. I'm like, okay, we're going to figure this out. And I figured it out. And then, you know, like, when something happens to her, like, she had gone to the hospital during the summer because I had stayed because I'm thinking I'm going to try to, you know, fix this for us. And I'm thinking I can't. I can't. Once you cheat to me, there's a line, and that's, that's the line you just don't cross. That's hard to forgive, that's and for sure. she's at the hospital. She didn't call the she didn't call the girlfriend. She called me. Of course. So in the hospital room where I knew she where I knew she couldn't get out of that damn bed, I said, Listen to me. I said, You can't have your cake and you can't eat it too. I said, and you made your choice. 
I was like, you better stick with your cake. And I'm like, why isn't the cake here next to you? Why am I here? And she came up with some like BS excuse. I'm like, this is BS. But, you know, I still remain friends with her because we have like a dog that, you know, I go over and take care of because she works. But at the same time, it's like constantly calling and what do you do? I'm like, I have moved out. Like I made the decision. It was the hardest decision I had to make. I was like crying like the whole day. My friend was like, "Well, Barb, Barb, is, you're you're talking you about it later. every lesbian story that's ever happened. Mm-hmm. Every single lesbian has had that and then some. Um, <laughs> The greatest lesbian story ever ever told. told. Exactly. It's not exclusive to lesbians. No, no, no. Understood. It's not. But I mean, the thing is, is I mean, what do you like? What do we feel like if, if because this has all happened to us? I can't speak for Cheryl because she doesn't share. But (laughs) I mean, (laughs) but the weird, the weird, the the weirdest thing is, I mean, to cut you off, I apologize. But the weirdest thing is, is that. When her father, when parents were alive, the father cheated on the mother, and she sat on the front porch and talked about the father like a dog. I said, the end, and she turned around and did the same thing. I said, you're just like your father. I said, nothing like your mother. I'm like, you're just like your father. I said, you're a cheater and a liar. But you know what, Barbara? You know what, Barb? A lot of times, and I've learned at the end of a relationship, whether it's cheating or not cheating, I mean, I am fortunate. I am friends with all of my exes except for two, and there was um and no one cheated there wasn't any of that stuff going on we just grew apart but i have found that sometimes and the reason why i'm friends with all of them is that once we broke up you know once we broke up it wasn't sort of like okay now that we're not in a relationship you moved out we're insta friends you can't do that it i mean for me it was i needed my space they needed their space to heal Yes, I need my space. She doesn't. She she won't respect that I need my space. Yeah, That's but you're every time you go back, you're allowing her to continue to repeat the pattern. So it kind of her has to pattern. B- I stay away. Yeah, but you're saying. But do like you? Co- but you do. But you still have the co-parenting of the dog. That's an excuse. It's like when pa- for me, I'm going to be harsh right now, and I have I'm very opinionated. So you've pretty much known, and you can disagree or go not. Go for it. I'm, but go you know, it's it. like when mind. parents have a child, and they use the child as an excuse. And I think someone's got to keep the damn dog. I think for right now, someone keeps the dog. And then no, she keeps the dog. She keeps the dog when she's at work because she works like eleven hours a day. I go over when she's not there and I feed the dog and I let the dog out and I spend a little time with the dog and then I leave. But when she's home, I don't go over there. Well, like, it sounds I'm like you're doing, doing the right thing. thing. Like, yeah. What are you doing today? Well, what do you guys think? She'll be like, "What are you doing?" I today? mean, how do you deal with I'm, someone I'm like, toxic? I'm busy. I moved out. I have my own place. I'm busy. I'm up to my ears in boxes, and I'm loving being single. Well, wonderful. That's great. Are you guys I, the same age? Great. Are you guys I the same am age? Ten years. I'm ten years older than her. Okay, Cheryl, you, you had something to, to say. Yeah, I just want to congratulate you first of all for standing in your power. Okay. Thank and you. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to have boundaries, and but you're moving the right direction. You know, you're moving the right yes. direction. Yes. Every day you're making that choice. And I just yes. want to tell yes. you, I. I, I really commend you for that, okay? Because it's difficult. Thank but you. But you keep moving yes, forward, you know, sticking to your guns. Because there's still you're still in the relationship, right? In some way, even though you're not there physically, it's still ending. Let's just say it's still ending because your energy is still blended with hers, energetically speaking. So we do want to yes. get you every day consciously creating you standing in your power and setting those boundaries all right and that every day you're going to get stronger and stronger okay i mean i'm 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 like at that point where you know like i'm already like you know 10 leaps ahead but then like if something catastrophic happens you know where you know like financially she comes to me and i'm like i can't say no because like if her cell phone's turned off, she can't have a job. And if she doesn't have a job, then she won't have a car. And then she won't have a house. And that's, that's okay. what I feel like. I, go, I, Sheena. I, I go. don't want someone to fail. I got it. Barbara, you're driving me crazy right now because <laughs> what you but just said, are. what you just said just made this, made my hairs. But I'll let Sheena deal with this one. You 
aren't that's that's not your problem anymore you're not her mother you're not her legal guardian i know and that's not your problem anymore i mean the world is filled with crying narcissists in their little <laughs> bassinets even though they're 50 and no no one is feeding them or taking care of them or, or, or you know what i mean you that you have to let her grow and she's never going to grow yeah. as long as you swoop in and save her and she's not a person of integrity she didn't treat you well she didn't uplift you she didn't make you feel like you were the most special person in the world which is what a partner should do and she uh she cheated and i can tell you before she cheated she thought about it because those kind of folks are always looking to trade up for a better parent that gives them more stuff <laughs> and she just you know okay. what I mean? She, she used you as a means to an end. And I know it's very difficult, and I've been through this. I know it's very difficult when you love someone and you remember who they were when you met them, and you keep waiting for that person to come back. And you keep thinking, well, who is that person? Where is the real person? But sometimes that is the real person, and the person you met wasn't yeah. the real person. And they, they yeah, dazzle you I do, I... you. You know what I mean? Honey, even if you have yes, to walk think... away from the dog, and I know how hard that is, you you need to you need to you need to get away, honey. You need space because you need to go on with your life, and you need to heal. And your healing is never going to happen unless you separate yourself from her. Now, there's you know there's three main stages to getting away from a narcissist. The first one, as Cheryl said, is congratulations, you did. Most people don't. The second one is to focus okay. on your healing. And that means what makes you feel good? What makes you feel nurtured? What makes you feel empowered? Doing beautiful things for yourself while you heal. Then the third stage is you kind of have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I did this. I allowed this to happen to me. And you have to forgive yourself because it's not your fault right. that you tripped up on this person that was something that they claim she claimed to be one thing and she turned out to be something else. And you have to forgive yourself for that. But you can't get to that phase unless you get to the healing phase. And you can't fully get to the healing phase unless you get away from her because she will keep picking the scab off because she wants you to okay. stay energetically indebted to her mm -hmm. for eternity. Do you Ener know what I mean? Does that make sense, sweetie? Okay. Energy yeah. vampire. Yeah, yeah. I got to cut um, cut the cord. Yeah. I got to cut the cord. Yep. Cut the cord. Well, thanks, Barb. And, uh, thank you, you know, thank you for okay. calling. I hope we've uh, given you some insight and uh, keep your chin up. And, and, you know, you have to love yourself and do things for yourself first. Yes. So yes. thank you. All we have another thanks, caller. Guys. Have a good night, Barb. Alrighty. Hello. Bye-bye. Right, Hi, sweetheart. Hello, hello, hello. Who's calling? Welcome to Between the Sheets. Oh. Hello? Oh, hello? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was calling Star Vision. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> well, we kind of have two people that do the same thing. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's, What's your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the wrong number? I'm so sorry. My name is Alexandria. And what's your question, Alexandria? Because we actually can help you tonight because we're fully staffed up. <laughs> oh, you can't help me. Well, so we're the show right after Shar, so you're in the you're in the you're doing the right thing. Oh, okay. Well, so I so I don't know. Like I I guess basically I was just calling the because on, what I have on my spirit is just like an uneasiness with work, basically. Um, so I just have like this manager who is, you know, basically the absolute worst. I feel like maybe out of all the problems you guys hear, maybe this isn't like a, you know, a huge problem, but it's what's going on in my life right now, at least for the moment. And so, I don't know. I just feel like I have a boss that's not making my life easy in any way, shape or possible. And so it's kind of getting to the point where I need to start looking for a job, but I want to know if um like how are the job prospects for me in terms of my next opportunity i had this one job that i really wanted to to get into but i kind of think i'm i got blackballed from that job so which is like a whole nother story 
So I don't know if you can provide any feedback, any any help, or I don't know if I'm like totally off, or you know if you guys. Well, hold on. We um, I don't know. Cheryl, Sheena, both both gonna take this one or the other. What are you thinking? Sure, we can both take it. Okay, you get two readings today. <laughs> okay. So talking about energy vampires, I have to say we seem to be on that tonight, dear, because it feels like your employer kind of short changes you do you understand that or what do you mean can you can you explain well it just feels like this person either doesn't give you the time of day or doesn't give you the credit you deserve oh absolutely because these people they make me feel like i'm some sort of idiot like i don't know what the hell i'm <laughs> doing and like i'm just like some sort of dimwit and i'm like dude I respect myself enough, and I know that I am I'm way better than what they give me credit for. So, and that's another frustrating part about this is that, granted, I know that there's areas that I can develop and grow to succeed, but, like, you ain't got to talk to me like I'm stupid. And that's exactly what these people be doing to me, and that is so frustrating. So what's happening is like your soul. So what I'm getting right now is like your soul is the reason why you're so uncomfortable in this job and you're wanting to get out is because your soul, you know, your spirit, your heart is saying, look, this isn't right. Right. The higher self is saying this is not good. And I actually feel like you're being guided to leave there. I just want to tell you, I don't know if you believe in angels, but I definitely feel Archangel Michael, you know, guiding you and leading you away from this situation and and i just want to tell you i just feel like there's a big door opening for you but i want to say there's also a movement with not only your job but are you thinking about physically moving or moving locations or see moving? that's another thing because i'm like super into like spirituality so sometimes i go and talk to people um but so I've heard this multiple times about how I'm supposed to be physically moving. I ain't got no plans on physically moving. I got no plans on physically moving at all. So I don't know what that's about. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, you don't have to know sometimes, but just knowing that you've heard it a couple of times, that could be kind of a validation, right? That there's some movement happening around you. But I just want to say you, it is time for you to actually leave your employer definitely i think the market the job market is out there i'm going to hand it over to sheena i'm just going to tell you you're definitely being guided away from this job like your energy your vibration is much higher than the people you're working with okay oh my gosh yeah these people are freaking insane <laughs> like they i think they're like petty i think they're toxic i think the woman that is, is giving me an extremely difficult time i don't think she's happy personally within her own life because it's like, why would you spend your time really making it difficult for the next person? And especially because one, so by way of background, I'm a lawyer. And I know that this woman, when the when she was coming up, when she was in, the, you know, when, when she was coming up as a lawyer, I'm pretty sure that she experienced some sort of, you know, people like, because basically, you know, like w for women, I'm pretty sure during a certain time period, Sometimes men were probably like, you know, this, oh, like women shouldn't be working here when it, women shouldn't be doing this kind of work. So I feel like she probably experienced that in her early career. And mm. so I'm, I'm just surprised that she would give another woman such a hard time for nothing. Let me tell you like something. Let me let me explain something. Um, I'm 58 and when I started, and, and I went to law school too, okay, and I graduated. When I got in this, and I'm in the entertainment business now, but when I started in this business, and it's not that long ago, men never really, it was a men's club for a lot of, for a lot of jobs and a lot of different positions. It was a men's club. But I will tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Some of the worst bosses I have had have been women. What I have found is that most women bosses are more competitive and the least nurturing of the bunch. But I want Sheena to give you her take on your first question. So hold on one second. I'll follow up okay. with that, Dan, and say I think the worst things that have ever been done to me in my life have been done by women. Ooh. And I think uh, this is a topic for another between the sheets. <laughs> I think the way women treat each other is abominable and 
and we hold ourselves back by stepping on each other's heads instead of lifting each other up and that's part of the problem with your boss sweetheart another problem is is that she is just like you said a toxic person and i agree with everything that cheryl said about where you're at and how to deal with that but i will say even one step further on top of that sweetheart this person is so toxic that she is literally draining your chi your life force and I see that you are exhausted by her. I see that you sometimes have health problems like headaches and, you know, intestinal problems, stomach problems. Like she is literally draining your spiritual immune system mm. with, with all of her, you know, just dark, sludgy crap, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, no, every time, sometimes I'm like, I get like, you know, when you when you're sitting at your desk and like an email comes through sometimes yeah. I, I just like i my like my like i can't breathe sometimes when panic attack come through from her it's a panic <laughs> yeah, attack because i'm like oh my gosh so before you before saying, they prescribe like, xanax and you take it you better off leaving the job <laughs> yeah because yeah. that feeling you feel sweetie <laughs> that's like her sludgy energy coming out of your computer and kind of hitting you in the solar plexus. Nasty. And yeah. somebody doesn't have a right to do that to someone else. Now, some people do it on purpose. Oftentimes, people don't know they're doing it because they're so miserable. They're just, their energy is leaking out everywhere. But you have to protect yourself spiritually, and you have to protect yourself emotionally until you can get to another job. Because I'm worried about you. I don't want you to start developing health problems or start developing emotional problems all because you're being drained by this person. You know, we talk a lot about our immune systems and we've learned that our physiological immune system is a lot of what stops us from getting diseases and keeps us healthy. But we also have an emotional immune system and we have a spiritual immune system and they all work together. And a toxic person will drain your spiritual immune system until you feel like you can't lift your head or until you have so much anxiety that you literally feel like you're a sick feeling in your solar plexus, in your stomach, every time you know something's coming from her. And it's, it's just not right. And no one has a right to do that to anyone, sweetie. So please start looking for another job and please find a way to get away from this person, sweetheart, because you're, when you do, you're going to soar. You're going to feel like you've been let out of prison, like your spirit is going to be so free, and you're going to get all your physiological strength back, all your emotional strength back, and all you have to do is just separate from this person. You know, I know easier said mm-hmm. than done, but trust me, your, your whole outlook on everything is going to change when you move away from this person. Well, thank you, yeah, thank you, thank so you I for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank tune you in again. That. We're here next week. Yep, we're here <laughs> next week. We're right on after. We're right on after Shar. Oh, so, so this is the this is the time. Yep, um, this is it's are... this is called Between the Sheets. We're on from seven to eight thirty p.m. Pacific here on United Broadcasting Network. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Hey, everybody. You. You're welcome. I just plugged between the sheets. We're here the first and third Friday of every month. Don't let this week screw you up. Yeah, we kind of messed on, up this we week. We kind of messed up this week. Um, th- we're on next week um, with Thomas John. That's going to be exciting. Um, and uh, 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. is our number to phone in tonight. Um, so, you know, taking that... <laughs> It's kind of like moving forward regarding, bless you, Sheena. Bless you, Sheena. Thank you. Bless you, Sheena. So oh, when I'm someone. i my new video space. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. You know, when you've got these people in your life and stuff, and I know, you know, I've had readings with both Cheryl and I have readings with Sheena in the past. Like, you know, how do we, how do people protect themselves let's say they can't leave right now they they have to stay in this job there isn't an opportunity financially what do what what are some of the things that people can do to spiritually protect themselves well i just want to say great question it's really about setting the intention right to actually communicate with the universe that 
you want to look for another job. You know, you've got to start placing your order with the universe. You've got to kind of start connecting with your higher self because that's how you're going to manifest what you want in your life. But that's number one is set the intention that you're already going to start stepping away from this job energetically. I also want to say as much pain or uncomfortableness as it, as it can be, somewhere in there, there's going to be gratitude and love about stepping away, knowing that something wonderful is about to happen or some new door is going to open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is about using that beautiful energy of thank God. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm getting the message from my guides, angels, loved ones. It's time to move on. Great things are going to happen for me. So those are just a couple of things. Also, it is about, you know, not taking your work home from you uh, with you. If you can, like, don't take your work home with you. A lot of people will shower when they get home or change their clothes, literally, because it is about cleaning the energy body, not just the physical body, but cleaning the energy body, letting anything negative just go right down the drain. Anything that's not yours, it's not for your highest good, go right down the drain, changing the clothes, coming back into your own power, into your own space, so to speak. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. And I know I've told everybody this. I know, Gayan, I've told you this. It's also about not allowing every single negative thing to come your way to get firmly planted inside of your spiritual periphery you you can't take everything on in the world and so some people will literally try to sort of throw their icky energy at you and the trick is you don't accept it you you keep yourself when you realize that somebody is not somebody that you can trust to be energetically close to as obviously this woman has proven herself again and again as the boss to not be that, then you learn to pull your energy away. So physically you may be in the same room with them, but you pull your energy back so it's not right in the middle of their toxicity. And you learn to implement spiritually filters and screens so you don't let it all in. And I think that's, I teach that when I teach my empath classes, it's very hard for empaths not to take everything in. But you, you don't have to take every single thing in. And every time somebody acts toxic, you don't take it in. And Gayan, earlier you were talking about how do you stay in a twin flame relationship? How do you stay in a karmic relationship when somebody is maybe not being the best little flame they can be? <laughs> and, and, and the answer is you don't take it all in. You, you still live your life. You allow yourself to the soul tie to stay. But you say, look, you know what? You got to go fix your stuff. And then you come back around when you're in a better place. But I'm not going to sit here and, and take all of your toxicity and, and, and deal with all of your malarkey. Because it's, it's not, that's not my karma. My, it's not my destiny to put up with all of your stuff. And it's okay. You don't have to separate yourself from someone 100%. But you do have to just put in a pause, right? Or say, uh, not let everything they're doing get to you. Because some people, they just hurt and they want anyone to listen to them. It's the expression, right? Hurt people, hurt people. They're, they just want some place for all of their anger and unhappiness to go. And if you are in that person's life as their employee, as their primary partner, as their friend, as their family, oftentimes it comes at you. And you have to make yourself protect yourself and make yourself as impenetrable as you can towards all of that icky energy coming at you, you know? So as an empath, you know, because I am an, I mean, we're, I mean, most of us obviously are empaths and the ones that aren't are sociopaths. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be something in the middle. There's got to be something in the middle. But I mean, as an empath, I do find that, you know, I do take things on and I, I give sure. people more of a benefit and I've got a more open <laughs> mind. But I'm also... You know, I do take things personally and absorb it and feel it. So, you know, it's like if they if they say something to me, you know, I take it very because I am very sensitive and very emotional. And it's very difficult because it's the head that says it's the, it's the head that says, you know, this is not as big as you're making it be. But it's how I feel. It's it, that I feel that. It's like I feel that intensity, but it may not necessarily be exactly what they're trying to translate. So how do you end up if someone says something to you, which maybe isn't 
it maybe isn't nasty. Maybe it's their tone. Maybe it's the way of behavior, or they're just blunt, which I, 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 I you know, I'm blunt, but there are people that are blunt that are just rude. I'm blunt with, you know, with compassion. So when someone is blunt or expresses something and it ends up on the borderline of rude, how do I, how, how, how does an empath not personalize it and then just like completely fall apart? And then, you know, at least my kind of empath, then this starts to go. Then it's all about the brain and the, the ruminations mind and the ruminations and, and so how, how does one sort of find that balance? Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, sweetheart. I was just going to say, look, uh, number one, Gayanne, you're in such a creative field that you're, you're just in creative mode all the time. You know, your heart's on your sleeve. You know, your intuition is probably off the charts. Your empath, as you mentioned, and that is where um, creative empaths, that's how we develop, is we step into that right brain, so to speak, mm -hmm. the empaths do. So when people do rub us the wrong way or ruffle our feathers, we almost have to check in with ourselves and say, look, am I, am I okay? Or was it something that I did? But it's like checking in with yourself I would definitely take a breath, step out of the situation, come back into the situation and connect with that person again and maybe reframe it or talk to them. That's kind of how I do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Sheena wants to add something to it, but what I do is I try to just step out of their energy because usually it's something in their energy that's uh, that that's behind mm -hmm. it, you know, whether they were, you know, they were rubbed the wrong way or they had a bad day because that's usually where it comes from. Yes, I was going to say compassion. Have some compassion. Because you, somebody said earlier that people don't always know when they're like off the edge, mm -hmm. off the charts, crazy, uh, over emotional or whatever. Um, if you like that person, you just you have to just accept sometimes that mm -hmm. they're going to behave badly. Some Sometimes we all do. Huh? Absolutely. I like the expression too, Cheryl, uh, the eyes are mirrors. I think that uh, oftentimes when unhappy people are telling you things about you that they don't like, they're oftentimes telling themselves things about them that they don't like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, um, you know, like uh, our first caller whose girlfriend made her feel less than, well, that was because the girlfriend felt less than. So somehow misery loves company. They, they try to, to put you in the same place where they're at because they're unhappy. And in that case, you just have to... Uh, remember, this is coming from an unhappy person. This is somebody's unhappiness. It doesn't have to do with me. We don't have to take everything so personally. And it is a hard thing, like Cheryl said about you, Gayanne. It is hard when you're an artist because you keep that channel open a lot. It is hard when you're an empath because the channel to receive messages is so wide. Um, yeah, I always say normal people are like a straw and empaths are like a drain pipe <laughs> that the messages come through. Uh, but you have to learn, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. This is not every single unhappiness about this person doesn't have to do with me. And if they don't know how to treat me with love and respect, then that is simply a lack in them. Yes. And um, they either have to figure it out or or not be a part of my life. I love the expression, love yourself enough to walk away. Yeah. I think it's so true. You have to love yourself enough to say, no matter how much I love you, no matter how spiritually tied I feel to you, if you can't get your celestial poop in a group and <laughs> treat me the way I should be treated, then I have to step away until you can grow. So, and, um, you know, but I have a question. Cause I remember like with uh, like, I see what you're saying, but then I was talking about like what I was thinking about, like protection. So, you know, explain like, crystals okay a and why you know why some people like sheena with you i mean when we have had a few readings you said you know if you can get this crystal or that yeah. crystal for that whatever i was dealing with at the moment so can someone please explain because there's certain types of protection isn't that a protection too the wonderful protection yeah it's a great one to take around with you all the time i douche with crystals 
I think crystals are. Um, <laughs> she did say that. She did. She did. I think everybody at every time should have at least 10 crystals in every orifice they have. Um, <laughs> crystals are a wonderful way to protect yourself because they're gentle. Their energy is gentle and you can put intentions into them. They naturally come with their own stuff because they come from the earth with certain properties. And it's really easy to throw them in your purse, in your pocket. Um, I have a selenite wand and a big piece of black tourmaline on the headboard where Hey-o. I sleep. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? And and they're not, uh, they're very low maintenance. You purchase one, you set it down, and it's ready to go. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, ideally, we should all be able to separate ourselves from negativity and toxicity on our own. However, not everybody can do that. So sometimes you need a little help. And world people need help, right? I'm also a big fan of herbs, of sage, um, burning something you love, lavender. Uh, the way you eat, certain spices you eat will protect you spiritually. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do without getting all crazy that are just a natural way, not just for you to deal with a certain toxic person in your life, but all the toxicity and the negative energy that's out there. So it's not all permeating you all the time and affecting you all the time, you know? And, and you know, I just want to say Sheena brought up a good point is the collective consciousness. You know, a lot of us as empaths, especially, we were picking up about this collective consciousness. So when things are crazy, we almost have to take a step and realize, look, being an empath means self-care self-care knowing that we are picking up you know it's almost like our bandwidth is uh reaching farther and farther with each year passing so we have to realize how sensitive we really are and that it's such a gift and it's a power and we can use that for health benefits for you know finding our path in life but also realize that we are very sensitive to what's happening in the world as a whole but why do you think people find us like, you know, they say you're overly sensitive, you're overly emotional, you're very deep. And, you know, and they say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> and I, I just don't under. It's like, it's like uh, I, I was raised that all that stuff was really a good thing to have to, to yeah. you know, and it's so and it's a, I had someone say to me, I said, you know, she goes, just, you know, we're really good friends, but just be superficial with me and, yeah. you know, and do deep with other people. I don't do deep well. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think anybody who says I don't do deep well, gay Ann, doesn't belong in your life, maybe in somebody else's life, but I don't think that's enough for you to have in your life is somebody who just wants to talk about superficial things. Because honestly, you work in the entertainment business, you can walk up to someone on a set and make small talk. Yeah, uh, You need the people in your life who are your real life True. to go those deep places where you want to go. People are scared to go those places because they haven't done the spiritual and emotional work on themselves. And so um, if you don't, it's scary to dive deep in here if you know you're not going to like what you see. And so, and you want to talk about all this deep spiritual stuff. I think it's fun. I think it is so much way. fun when you get into these Me conversations too. with people. And even when people, like if I'm talking to you or to Cheryl or someone that has a little bit more, you know, insight or that has honed, you know, that more than I have. I just, you know, I, I don't study it. I just, I, I live it. But you guys actually have done a lot more work. And, you know, I don't mind if someone, like if you, like Sheena, I remember conversations with Sheena, like, you know, she, because we are friends, you know, she, you know, didn't sugarcoat shit with me in our conversations. I mean, she was yeah. just like, Row! and it was okay. And I accepted it, A, because it was coming from a place of love. So we start with that and it's safe, but it's, you know, I, you know, I could take it. And that's why, that's the thing is, if I said something to Sheena, I'm sure she'd take it, or Cheryl should take it, even if it was, maybe the tone was off, or I wasn't, a, but it really is interesting that when they do say that you're, what is it, your vibe finds your tribe, that it really is, I could, you're right, Sheena, I could be superficial with anybody, although I must say, superficial chatter conversation in my 20s and 30s, sure, I could hold my own 
as I get older, I really, seriously, and I have to do it on set and stuff, I really don't like to do it as much. I'll do it, but my attention span is this short now. Where before I could sit yeah. there for an hour, blah, 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 but now it's like, la, 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 gotta go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want more in our lives as, as we get older. We want, we want more input. We want to learn more from people. Well, some people, that's what I'm saying. You know, some people do and some people don't. And I just never have settled. I, you know, it's like, I, look, we all are works in progress. No matter what we do, you know, we, 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 awareness is important. You know, once we're aware, whether we're, we become self-aware or someone out of kindness and love and, and, you know, tell us, you know, this is what we've noticed, you know? And so you work, you work on it. it it's, I don't care how old you are. I mean, on our deathbeds, whenever 80, 90 years old, knock on wood for all of us, we will not have accomplished everything. You know? And how I feel is at that point, because I do believe in an afterlife. I don't know what I believe in. Sometimes I believe in an afterlife, and sometimes I believe in reincarnation. I have no idea. But I do know that the end of this physicality doesn't stop. Something else happens. I don't particularly know what that is, but I don't think we cease to exist. I wonder if it's with the same toxic person that you were trying to escape in the last life. <laughs> right. <laughs> so tell me, guys, what do you guys think about the afterlife? What do you guys believe happens? Well, I'll just say first, Diane, I think the small talk ending that is about you stepping more into your truth. I think people are just stepping more into their truth, you know? They want to know who who you are. You know, who are you? Who am I? Like, let's really, let's really create something beautiful in this world. So I think that's that's where you are at this point in your life, Gayanne. Is it's much more meaningful for you and for all of us. You know, mm -hmm. as we're going through this year. As far as the afterlife, I'm there. I believe it. I definitely believe in the afterlife. I uh, believe in reincarnation. I definitely feel that our soul, our personality, we certainly continue. That's how we work, right, as mediums, mm -hmm. uh, as spiritual psychics and, and healers, you know, is um, many of us do connect with the other side. And how wonderful is that, right? How wonderful it is. That's very cool. I mean, I do. Yeah. I mean, you know, Sheena, how about you? Yeah. I believe in the afterlife and reincarnation. How about that? Cool. How come it, maybe it's everything. Maybe you can have the chocolate scoop and the vanilla scoop. <laughs> um, <laughs> I believe that when we pass, we go to a place that I call home. Some people call it heaven, but I call it home because it really is our real home. Because this is this kind of like celestial soul school down here where we're, we're here to learn lessons every life. And I believe when we're home, we have a thing that we do at home as well, our, our home passion, our home service. And then when spirit decides it's time for us to come back and do another learning uh, tour, another tour of duty, then we come back down here to learn more lessons. And then we just keep doing that all over again until we no longer need to be here because we've learned what we need to learn. And then we stay at home and become a part of the universe that helps others to come down here and grow and do the same. That's my, Cara? that's my five minute, what I believe in. What do you believe in, Cara? Well, um, I, I've spoken to various clairvoyants and uh, especially recently, the two or three, one who was on this show actually, Wanda Bionats, she's amazing. She's 82, she's a fantastic woman. But um, recently I spoke with another lady from England and um, I've, I, I've dealt with her before on a couple couple of occasions but my mum and dad always come in straight away she knows a lot about my parents I I don't know whether I believe it it's very comforting it's wonderful but she gets it right and she says things like oh your dad's here he can't believe he's there he says when I was when I was alive I would have called this a load of old bollocks <laughs> now that's exactly how I would have said it <laughs> it's it, it she tunes right in there so I don't know I like I like it. It's comforting and it's lovely to think that my mum and dad are up there waiting for me with a babe in their arms, a baby I lost once. They're holding it for me. I Aww. mean, it's a lovely thought. And if it's real, I'll sh I should be just like my dad. I would have thought this was a load of old bollocks, but here <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, what about past lives? So, we have past lives, right? Obviously, 
Um, some people go back really far, some people not. So you encounter people in your life, um, and it's a familiarity. It's something, you know, you know, you know, you know who, at least I do, I know who I've met before or who. You do? I don't know wow. how I know because it's a fam- it's this weird odd familiarity. Sometimes um, we're drawn to people that, that are not good for us. But it's not even that. Even people that are good for me too. It's sort of it's this automatic connection. Now, what could it be? I don't know because I believe in this. I automatically go that it's someone that I have known in my past lives, and. Uh, but, you know, some past lives are good and some past lives obviously are not. That's why we keep coming back and we keep trying to figure out what the lesson is and figure out to learn. So that's the case. You know, when we finally have, let's say, met this person in this incarnation of our life, okay, and now, you know, we don't really know but we think or somebody could tell us, but it's like a really good relationship right now. It's like when a bad relationship and you keep coming back, coming back, do we know that when this is the same person that we've been on and on and on with, that it's done, that it's finally over? How do we know it's finally over? Well, I think you come back in the next life and you're like, where are they? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I, I think you just... I think that you have to make sure in a situation like our first caller tonight, that clearly is a, she clearly has soul karma with that woman, her ex, that they, they've done this before. And, um, you know, and maybe in another life she was her mother. So now she pops into thinking she's her mother or it's, it's you, cause you're all kinds of things with your soul family, right? You come back with those that are your soul family that are your family when you're home and you can be all kinds of things. You can be their mother, their brother, their dad, their their sibling, whatever the story is. So um, when somebody is not good for you, who is, well, I like to say somebody that you have soul karma with, they're not necessarily a soulmate or part of your soul family, but you do have karma from another life. You have to learn the lesson in this life so they'll go away and and they won't uh come back and and want to do it all over again and sometimes it means you have to be strong enough to walk away sometimes it means you have to be strong enough to not let them what they're saying hurt you or affect you in any way and also admit Um, that you have a part in it that's another another aspect right it's not just them it's it's the union the union of the 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 joint lesson that you need to learn right and you're right. teaching them lessons too, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so pretty much, is it everybody in our lives that we have past lives with? So, like for all of us here, does it have to be lessons that we have to learn, or do we go through life like like everybody that touches us and meets us is that? Well, we. I mean, do we always connect with them every life? Like us. I mean, have we had past lives together? Is this is why we're all of a sudden? connected and we're, we're doing something like this? I'm curious. Wow. I mean, I'm not saying everyone has the answer. Maybe we were a girl band in the 1920s. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> we it. A, we were a, a chamber band in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> I will not play the accordion. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I'd rather play any instrument than the accordion. No, but I'm serious. I mean, like, people that we connect with. I mean, ser- I mean, have we lived, have we met each other before? Well, no coincidences. I always like to think no coincidences yeah. and that, yeah, I think we all have had past lives. Not everybody maybe, but we, maybe us on the group and Tony, we've all had past lives together and we've said, hey, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. You know, we had great past lives. A lot of us have great past lives. A lot of us have, you know, difficult and struggling past lives and, and we're teaching each other, you know, we have to be in agreement, right? So it is about both of us are learning, and there's so many lessons to learn. It's always about coming back to love, right? Coming back to love and having that uh, really open us up and go even deeper and find that connection that we are all connected. We really are one soul. Sheena? Like that or not, you know, but we are. We're all connected. Yeah, and absolutely we are. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I thought Sheena was going to say something. 
Oh, it was. I was going to say absolutely that. And that connection is beautiful. And not everybody that is a, a part of your soul family, right? Not everybody comes down at the same time. You're not always all here together. You're not always kind of catapulted as babies together and you grew up together. Uh, sometimes you're here at different times. Sometimes you only see each other on the earth for a little while. No problem. See you when we're home. We'll do it again. And not everybody do you have giant struggles with. Sometimes you come down with people and they, you and them are doing the same struggle at the same time, mm -hmm. but not necessarily opposing each other. Got it. Everything doesn't have to be this adversarial thing with each other, except usually with twin flames. That's a whole nother thing where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of push and pull because that's a whole different thing. But sometimes you come down here, um, like here's a really weird thing. So my... My mom, my two best friends who have only met once, and my girlfriend and I all believe in another life we were nuns. <laughs> Is that like a really weird thing? Wow. My, my oh, two best friends, I mean, they're like kind of like nunnish in life. Like it's this whole nun connection. Like what is that about? No Except sex. I think we were all nuns. But did you, I mean, do you do you guys feel that, or you guys did past life regressions and and and, and no, discover our that? Our whole life, you. our whole life, we've always kind of thought about it in this kind of weird way, and um, so that's you know, that's what's that about? Yeah. And um, <laughs> I met my first best friend uh, when I was fourteen. My other best friend I met in twenty seventeen. And both of them were like, oh, I think I was a nun in another life. And my mom always thought that, too. Wow, that is kind of crazy. I mean, that's a nun thing. And I've always, like, felt like I, have in another life, was a nun. And uh, very tied into the, the work of St. Bridget. I've always felt very tied to her. Uh, St. Bridget of Kildare, the mm -hmm. Irish St. Bridget. And, um, you know, always thought, mm, nuns. As a matter of fact, I met some really great uh, nuns from the you know, drag nuns from Sisters of Perpetual <laughs> Indulgence. And I had them on my show. And when I learned that they actually followed the nun code, I mean, obviously not with the right. capacity, but they, <laughs> they really do follow the code of, of all of the service that nuns are supposed mm -hmm. to do, taking care of sick people, cooking for people, uh, providing comfort for people. And I thought, oh, my God, that's fascinating mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. still nuns and I couldn't get enough of that. <laughs> So I do think that that is a thing. I mean, I think that you all have time periods. I'll give you another interesting example. So um, my when I met my second best friend, it turns out she and her son run the historical society in the town I grew up in. I did not meet her in this town. I met her through her cousin that lives in, in Los Angeles. And it turned out she grew up five minutes from me. She and her son run the, they do civil, they're civil war reenactors. Well, I've been obsessed with Abraham Lincoln and the civil war since I was, I don't know, born. So one day after my girlfriend and I got together, her daughter and I, who were very, very close, we were sitting on the bed and I said something about Abraham Lincoln. And she said, oh, when I was a kid, I called him Abraham Lincoln. I thought he was so, so hot and I, I thought I knew him in another life. And I'm like, what is that? How did that just tie together all of my families? Right. That is so extraordinary. That's the thing, right? And I do think that you circle from time to time with people. And I think one of the most beautiful things in life that makes a lot of the, the, the crap that we endure in this life wonderful is finding people that really sing your song and knowing that you've been connected to them for centuries. And that's, I mean, that's one of the greatest rewards we have here, I think. Yeah. How do you solve a problem like Ashina? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, I mean, who? I mean, I grew up with nuns. Um, I went to Catholic school, grammar school. My mother's best friend was uh, with many nuns. Um, I was confirmed by a nun, Sister Jeanette. I was always immersed in nunnery, um, but. Um, you know, I got to see, like, I just got to go into the convent, you know, and I got to see what, like, what a convent inside looks like, you know, because, uh, but, I mean, I, and, and, of course, you know, every Catholic, Italian Catholic, at least, you know, they always want their daughter or son to be a priest or a nun, and, and I thought, oh, my God, if, I, and it, 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 it was discussed for a moment in my presence, and I'm thinking, 
if I ever became a nun, first of all, I couldn't, but if I ever became a nun, I would be so thrown out. Either I would be completely like ostracized or I would completely reinvent and revitalize what nun, what like what nuns are supposed to be. You would be a maverick. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be like kissing butt to those priests. But you know what's really sad <laughs> is, you know, there's not a lot of priests anyway out there now, and with that whole thing about you know the pedoph- pedophilia and all that stuff, like people aren't running to be priests. And but I do find it's very, <clears throat> very, um, like a convent is like a lesbian bar. There's not that many around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's not that many around anymore, and there's a lot of lesbians in it. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, I just want to say, you know, guys, uh, we're wrapping up. I just want to say thank you, um, everyone out there listening. Thank you for your calls. Um, you know, we'll be back next week, next Friday, with Thomas John. Um, you can, like, please have your questions. Call in. Um, it'll be a really fascinating. It'll be just fun. I mean, he's just amazing. Like I said, I... I, you know, was supposed to have a reading with him, but he was overbooked, and that's how I met Cheryl. So, again, there's no, again, like I said, there's, you know, there is, a, there's no coincidences, Cheryl, as you said. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, everyone out there, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett. Um, the shows will be up on YouTube in a couple of days, as well as please like the Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast, here on the United Broadcasting Network. I want to say thank you for Tony to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Cara. Cara, what's going on with you? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? I don't know. I'm just coming around like crazy uh, <laughs> jet lag thing. But, you know, here we are, New Year. I'm very excited about this new year. I feel like a n- different person entering a whole new place, which is great. Well, and... And Sheena, like, uh, just yeah. give, what are you? What's the new stuff with you? St- all of all of it. New radio shows, uh, new TV show. Always working with people and teaching and uh, working with clients and loving being a part of all of it. So SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. I actually have an up-to-date website for the first time in my <laughs> life. Uh, go find out some things about me. I would love that and uh, reach out and say hi. I'd love to be talked to and approached. Wonderful. And Cheryl, what have, what have you been, uh, what's what's coming up for your yeah, future? Is, well, you know, I have my healing prayer circle every Sunday night. You can join for free on my website, mediumcheryl.com. I'm doing a lot of social media, so you might see me on live Facebook, Instagram, uh, Clubhouse. But uh, I do have some upcoming events, so just check out my website under my events page. Thank you. Again, thank you, everyone here, and thank you, everybody outside. Again, um, happy f- it's Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. Um, really be safe. Um, you know, do the best you can to just uh, stay out of trouble, um, especially during these times. And it's I'm not only talking about COVID. OK, so I just want to say thank you for tuning in first and third Friday of every month between the sheets podcast. Um, have fun. And uh, my birthday party, by the way, was amazing. Oh, we should have talked about I know. That. Well, we can talk about it again. And thank you, Cara, for hosting. It was wonderful. And not one person got COVID, which, quite frankly, you usually <laughs> you usually want to go, you usually want to go, hey, you know, um, you know, no one got sick or no one got drunk or there was no drama. Now the thing is not one person got COVID and there's about 70 something people there. So, yay. Thank you, everybody. Drive safe. Be well. And always... Good night and namaste.